Come on, why don't you lift your hands wherever you are and just be sensitive to the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, be sensitive to the Holy Ghost right now. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, God's people, let your voice be heard right now. Come on, let your voice be heard right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Ghost is in this house tonight. I speak a sure truth. If I'm sure about anything, I'm sure about this. Whatever you need, you can leave here with it. Well, I can't get no help on Wednesday night. So whatever you leave, whatever you need, you can leave here with it. If you need deliverance, you can get deliverance in this house tonight. If you need a blessing, you can get a blessing in this house. If you need a breakthrough, it's in this house right now. Well, somebody that came to church tonight, and you may be on your last inch of your last rope. Can I tell you that there's help and there's hope here, and you can leave here with victory in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. If you have your Bibles, the book of Malachi, Malachi in chapter uh, 1, Malachi chapter 1 and verse 1. While you're turning there, again, let me say what an honor and privilege it is to stand in this pulpit. It's not just uh, formality for me to say that, but it really is a very distinct honor to preach to you wonderful people and God's people. And uh, thank you, Bishop Sutton, for the invitation, for the opportunity to plug into what God is doing in Birmingham. And you know, this is not about Brother Phillips. This is about the work of God. This isn't about new life. This is about the kingdom of God. It, it's, it's much bigger than this. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the kind of revival that God is, want, is not wanting to, but is pouring out in this last day and hour. It's, it's global. It's, it's more than just me and you and the people that we can touch. But you don't know that next person you touch could be the one that just changes the world. And I've said it many times. It's a very common cliche, but you don't have to change the world. You just have to change your world. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, thank you, Bishop Sutton, Pastor Collins. What a wonderful, I think we ought to just give them a hand. What a wonderful, wonderful group, family. And I love you and I applaud you. Amen. I'll be honest with you, I kind of feel like the U.S. Postal Service tonight, rain, sleep, or snow, because I've seen all of it coming here. And drove on ice, but the Holy Ghost helped us. And uh, somebody called me and they said, are you canceling? I said, only if I'm in the ditch. And so if God will keep me between the ditches, I'll be, I'll be there. We'll be having church, having revival. Amen. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1, the, Lord, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. If God will help us, I'm going to preach through the book of Malachi tonight, and so this ain't going to make much sense as far as my title is concerned, but hopefully uh, by the end of the night we'll get there. If God will help us tonight, I want to preach to us just for a little while in case you have forgotten. In case you have forgotten. Would you help me right now by lifting your hands and your voice to heaven and asking the Lord to move in this place? God, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks. There's nobody like you in heaven or in earth. You're so good to your people. God, I'm asking you, Lord, right now to have your way in this house. Saturate us with the Holy Ghost. Let somebody leave here tonight speaking in an unknown tongue as the Spirit of God gives the utterance for the first time. I pray right now that someone would be renewed. Somebody would be restored. Someone would leave here knowing that God is on their side. Come on, one more time. Would you lift your voice to heaven? 
and give God a shout of praise. Come on, magnify him with me right now. Exalt his name together. Come on, a little bit higher, a little bit louder. Would you just worship him in spirit and in truth? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I have a simple question for you tonight, and these questions are not loaded. You don't have to answer them out loud, but the question is, how much do you know about the Word of God? What do you know about its content? You know that there's 12 minor prophets and five major prophets. Did you know that there are four Gospels in the New Testament? Do you know the equalizer of the Old Testament book in the New Testament, such as Daniel and Revelation, Isaiah and John, Isaiah where God reveals himself, uh, I am the Lord, beside me there is no other. And in John where Jesus reveals himself as God. Do you know how to study to show thyself approved, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth? And study, have you learned that the Bible is compromised of 66 books written by approximately 35 authors in three different languages? Did you know that there's depth in the language that you can't find in the English language? Like the name of God in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. You can go home and study that. You can go home. And study about how Jesus revealed himself to the, Drew, to the Jews through the tetragrammatron and things of that sort. There's a lot of hidden stuff in the Bible. Uh, and using the words of Pilate, Jesus would then reveal himself to every Jew that I am indeed who I said that I was. This along with scriptures on one God, doctrine, salvation, hair, dress, giving, forgiveness, godly order of worship, prayer, fasting. We can preach about tambourines, drums. There's a lot to intake, and honestly, sometimes it can be so much that we can forget some things. And these are the kind of things that keep me coming back and studying God's Word. I love God's Word. And because I love His Word, I want to be more intimate with His Word. And that causes me to have questions. See, the thing is, is we, we live in a generation where some people have said it's not okay to ask God why. But I, I don't believe that. I believe it's okay to ask why. I, I ask questions. Some of my questions are really dumb questions. Like, do dogs go to heaven? I mean, what's the point in that? My, I, I got questions like, who's going to cook the marriage supper of the lamb? And how big is the commercial kitchen that's going to do all that? That's, that's pretty pointless. I think we all can agree. I, I owe it to my curious nature. It's just the way that I look at the Bible when the Bible says that Joseph had a coat of many colors. I want to know what colors they were. Were they horizontal stripes? Were there, was it polka dots? Was it even, I mean, how, what, how was the configuration on his coat of many colors? I, I have questions, to be honest, that are really not that deep and really not that powerful. And maybe it's just the way that I, I work. My brain, my, I may be in this by myself today. But there are definitely some more serious questions that we all have. We all know the main stories of the Bible and their meanings such as David and Goliath. Noah and the ark, Moses and Pharaoh. We know the story of how Jesus feeds the 5,000, Zacchaeus and a plethora of others. But we don't many times take the time to step back and preach about what was the purpose of Obadiah. Nobody preaches about Obadiah. Nahum. When was the last time you heard a message preached out of Nahum? We got one scripture that we quote out of the book of Micah, Micah 7 and 8. Rejoice, me, uh, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. Quote another scripture out of Micah. Most of us here can't. And so these are the things that make me ask questions like, what, where, I know there's a purpose for what's there, but what is the purpose that's there? And so I have took it upon myself and I continue to do this to go through the minor prophets, through the, uh, the stories that nobody really preaches about because they're in there for a reason. Sure, we know the reasoning for most of them, but uh, when you start looking at, through that lens at the book of Malachi, and that's the purpose of why we are where we are tonight, I 
started looking at Malachi as the way that I started to do to the other minor prophets. And when I went through this book, I began to study. I wanted to learn as much as I could about Malachi, where he went to school and all that cool stuff. Again, pointless questions that I had. I wanted to know about him. Then I started looking at the words and realized that everything to do with the message that God is giving his people is wrapped up in two verses of scripture. One I have read to you already. Another I will give you in a moment. But Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, God of the Old Testament, begins to speak through Malachi and says, I love you, saith the Lord, and yet you have said, why hast thou not loved us? They are living under the Persian Empire. And when you can read the rebuke by God, he gives Israel, he tells them, you've messed up again. And there were corrupt priests. And I'm not going to preach all of it tonight, but there was a curse that came upon them. There is a rebuke to Judah for marrying the daughter of the strange God. And, and he begins to talk through and says in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 17, you have worried the Lord with your words, yet you say, when have we wearied him? When we say, everyone that doth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, or where is the God of judgment? So God's people are in a place, again, they're living under the Persian Empire. They are in a place of captivity. They are in a place where they're not with God the way they've always been with God. And so God has sent them a rebuke. God has told them that bad stuff was going to happen. And there is a, a bit of people here that stand up and say, well, we haven't failed and we haven't went after the false God. So why, why, God, are you allowing this to happen to us? Basically, they were saying, why do all the bad people get rewarded by God? Why, wh where is the God of our fathers? Where is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? In short, they were saying, hey, we got some questions. We got some whys of why we are going through what we're going through. The bad guys get a pat on the back and the good guys get a knife in the back. We are in bondage. Where is the God of Moses that delivers? We are in heartache. Where is the God that Isaiah said could mend the broken heart? We're in poverty. Where is the God that provided manna in the wilderness? Where is God in all of these things? Where is God in the middle of my mess? Where is God in the middle of my captivity? Am I talking to anybody tonight? You know where I'm talking about. You know how you, you can say amen because you've been there. You've been in the time where you said, where is God in this? I know he's here, but where? Somewhere in the middle of this, God has to be here. But I can't see him, and I can't hear him, and I can't feel him. And you can go through Malachi. And I, again, I don't have time to preach it all. But Malachi chapter 1, or chapter 3, and verses 1 through 5, he starts talking about all the stuff that is to come. He's going to sit as a refiner and, and purifier of silver. And he's going to purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold. And then he said, there shall be the offering of Judah and Jerusalem shall be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old. And then he said, and I will come near to you in judgment and be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turned aside the stranger from his right. You know what's happening here is God is telling them, I know if you'll allow me to put it in modern terms, all I can see is the world that we live in. Uh, it, it, it's full of abortion. It's full of mass shootings. Uh, all I can see is the division in the church. Uh, all I can see is my bills uh, that are stacked up on the kitchen table. And all I can say uh, is where is the God of judgment? Uh, where is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Uh, in other words, uh, uh, where, where's God in the middle of all this? 
this. But when God begins to talk back, he said, I'm going to be a swift witness right before your eyes, and I'm going to bring to judgment the evil. You say, well, preacher, I know, but that prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus was born of a virgin birth. And you're right, and that's true. But the truth of the matter is, is there's another part to this story. You see, you scroll on down to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, and you'll find that he then says, For I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I've come to preach on a Wednesday night to somebody that's looking at questions, and you keep asking why, and you keep asking when, and you're puzzled by life because it's turned upside down, and all you can say is where is God in the middle of this? What's God doing in the middle of my mess? Can I tell you that I came with a word from God tonight that said I am the Lord and I change not? Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. I come to tell somebody that he's God and that's never going to change. He's God and that's never going to change. He's God and that's never going to change. Say, preacher, why are you repeating it? Because I want you to get it in your guts that the same God that brought you out of sin can keep you out of sin. The same God that brought you out of addiction can bring you out of addiction again. I I know it's Wednesday night, but I feel like shouting on a Wednesday night and telling somebody that's staring at something that's bigger than you that if God did it before, he can do it again. If he ever made a way, he can make a way again. If he ever opened doors, he can open doors again. I'm God, and I'm never going to change. My power is not diminished. Hallelujah. Can I preach to somebody right now that's trying to make their way back to God? You may be listening online. You may be in this house tonight, but you're trying to make your way back to God, and the devil has you convinced that because you failed God, that God's not going to pick you up again. But can I tell you that he is the Lord, and he changes not, and if he ever saved you, he can do it again. I know your life's in shambles. I I know your life is broken, uh, but friend of mine, uh, that the it's not too big. It's not too bad. It's not too hard for this God I serve. I'm God, and I'm never going to change. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He said, you keep looking around. Can I, can I just put it in my own vernacular? You keep looking around at everything and saying, where's God in this? But you fail to realize that if I wasn't in this, you'd have been destroyed a long time ago. It's true. You, you forget the fact uh, that it's in me that you live and move and have your being. Uh, it's true. You forgot uh, that I brought you out of Egypt. Uh, you forgot uh, that I brought you through the Red Sea. Uh, have you forgot uh, that I fed you in manna from heaven? Uh, and I'm going to tell you that it doesn't matter what you're going through. You might not feel me. Uh, I'm, it might seem as if I'm a million miles away. Uh, but if I had abandoned you, uh, you would have been destroyed along time ago. If I had walked away, you would have died in that car wreck. If I'd have walked away, you would have overdosed. If I would have walked away, they'd have I've come to tell somebody uh, it's because of him uh, that you're still you're not consumed uh, because he's still God. Uh, you haven't fallen apart uh, because he's still God. Uh, and even though you feel alone, uh, you are not on your own uh, because he is the Lord uh, and he's never going to change. Uh, that's why you're not consumed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, well, preacher, you don't understand. I'm scared. Yeah, so was Elijah. But that didn't change God. Jezebel said tomorrow about this time I'm going to have your head. And he ran and hide. I understand. We, we make heroes out of the Bible. And they are indeed heroes. But they dealt with the same stuff you deal with. 
Some of you have been immobilized by fear and you feel like just because you failed, uh, you failed to have faith and you've walked in fear for so long that now God can't use you. But understand the whole reason of why God spoke to Elijah in the still small voice is because he was hiding from Jezebel. Just because you got afraid, uh, that doesn't mean God changed. Oh, help me, Jesus. I understand we're living in, uh, and again, I, I know I talked about it Sunday night, but let me just go with this for a minute. We're living in un unsettled times, uh, but the one thing that you can rest assured on uh, is that God's not unsettled uh, because he's God, uh, and that's never going to change. Say, preacher, preacher, something deep and powerful. Here it is, uh, for I am the Lord, uh, and I change not. Uh, therefore, ye sons uh, of Jacob are not consumed. Uh, give us a deep revelation. Uh, baby, you just got it. Uh, it's going to be all right because uh, God is still God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, well, preacher, I can't hear from God. Can I just, can I preach where we live tonight? I can't hear from God. Understand what Malachi is doing. Malachi is taking us into 400 years of silence. But just because God gets silent doesn't mean that he changed. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jacob, you keep asking if I love you. But remember, the reason that you're here is because I love you. And that's what we usually do when we get to the place where we can't feel God is we start questioning. Does God really care? Because I can't hear him, that must mean that God doesn't care about me. But Israel, if I didn't love you, if I didn't care, call out to the Holy Ghost right now. If I didn't care, if I didn't love you, if I wasn't thinking about you every morning and every night when you go to bed, if I wasn't right there, if I didn't have the number of the hair of your head, if you weren't more important to me than the sparrow that I'm watching all the time, if you weren't more important, if you weren't the apple of my eye, you don't realize you would have done fallen. I know you don't feel close to me, but you don't realize how far away you could have went if I didn't love you, if I didn't care. Hallelujah, we're living in an hour right now where people are, are, are fighting with acceptance more than now than ever before. Everybody just wants to be accepted. This isn't what I was planning on going with this, but I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. Everybody just wants to be, I, I just want to know that somebody loves me. I just want to know that somebody cares. Let me tell you something. If you don't get anything else this preacher gets, you can come in service after service and revival service uh, uh, as long as we go. I don't know how long that's going to be. And if you don't hear another thing I preach, uh, you hear me right now. God cares about uh, where you're at. Uh, in case you have forgotten, uh, he's the God uh, that said, let there be light, and there was light. In case you have forgotten, he's the God that spoke the whole world into existence. And if you think for one moment that he's running short on power, let me just reiterate what Brother Malachi said. I am the Lord, and I change not. My God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi, you're taking us into 400 years of silence and it's going to feel like God is a million miles away, but you need to understand something, Israel. This isn't the first time God's been silent for 400 years. You see, you were in Egypt, uh, and there wasn't any there, there wasn't any divine appointment while you were there. You wasn't hearing any words from God while you were there that we can see. Four hundred years goes by, uh, and you've been doing the work of another man. Uh, you've been living in slavery and bondage, uh, and you can't hear from me. Uh, but you need to understand that just because you can't hear me uh, doesn't mean I'm not present. Uh, I'm God, and I'm never going to change. See, here's the deal. Again, when, when, when the, we can't hear from God and we can't feel God, we start doubting God. We start wondering, well, maybe my coworkers were right. Can I, can I preach to some new converts here right now that maybe the honeymoon period is, is starting to wear off and now you're starting to walk into a trial and it was all great when you first got in church, but now hell hits you right between the eyes? Can I tell you? 
that it doesn't matter what they said and what they did and all of that stuff and they can try to convince you all they want to. The truth of the matter is is the experience you have around an apostolic altar will argue down any argument that they can ever bring you. You don't want to know what you need to do when they say, well, how do you know? You say, all I can tell you is you have to feel it to try it. You, you just have to understand that in order to, to get what I've got in the assurance, I might not ever know everything there is to know about the Bible. I might not know all the ins and outs, but one thing I do know, God's never going to change. And what I felt at the altar supersedes everything that I've ever felt in the world. What I felt when God filled me with the Holy Ghost supersedes. That's why I'm still living for God. I, I know I've been, I've been there. I've had trials. I, I've had tests uh, when it seems like God uh, was a million miles away. But let me tell you, friend, uh, it's in that moment uh, that God was closer then uh, than ever before. Uh, it was in that time that I knew him uh, as someone that could, he's a keeper of my soul. Uh, when everybody said he'd leave me, uh, he stayed right there beside me. And so we, we, we need to, if we can, get through this tonight. This is how you deal with it. When you don't, when it seems as if God is silent, because we always, we all have those times in our life when God gets silent. What does the Bible tell us about how to respond to that? How does the Bible instruct us how to get through these trials and these tests that we don't want to go through and it feels like God is so far away? In the New Testament, you'll find a story where Jesus is with his disciples. And the Bible says that they are going to the other side of the sea. And as they are, the Bible says that a great wind begins to blow. And as the wind begins to blow, the Bible tells us that the water starts pouring in on top of them. And they're bailing out water. And the Bible says that Jesus was asleep. First of all, I want to know how he slept in the middle of all that. And that seems exactly like what some of y'all are, are going through right now. Jesus, how are you asleep when I'm going through what I'm going through? You can't feel this water? How do you sleep with all that? And the Bible says that, that they were, I mean, and the, the boat's sinking, man, and Jesus is sleeping. I don't know if he was floating on water or what, but he's asleep. And they asked one of the most, I, I mean, this, this question here is probably asked more in a spiritual sense than any other question. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus gets up and starts wiping sleep from his eyes. You see, the problem is Jesus doesn't, it, it's not that Jesus don't care about where you're at. The problem is, is you haven't put into context what you're going through. Because if you back up a little bit, you'll find that Jesus said, you get in this boat and you go to the other side. And I know you're in the middle of the storm right now. But what you need to recognize is I've done told you that you're going to the other side. And if that, you, don't, you, don't need to under, you don't need to step back and say, don't you care that we perish. You need to step back to the last time Jesus spoke and apply that to this situation. When God gets quiet, go back to the last time Jesus said something to you and then apply it because it'll still work and it'll still apply to what you're going through. It'll still keep you. Well, preacher, you don't know how far away I am from God. I'm going to tell you one of the last things you'll hear before you backslide is I love you and you're always welcome back. And so even though you feel you're so far, let me just tell you, go back to the last time he spoke and know that he still loves you and you're still welcome. And Master, don't you care that we're sinking? Uh, no, I care, but you need to recognize I've already gave you the answer to the question that you're asking right now. So put your big boy boots on and keep rowing uh, because if I said you're going to the other side, uh, you're going to go to the other side. What if the ship sinks? Uh, just hold on to me. I know how to walk on the water. Uh, just keep on holding on to Jesus uh, and you go to the other side. Master, don't you care that we perish? Hey, in case you've forgotten, I'm the God 
I'm, I'm still the God that opens up the blinded eyes. And I'm still the God that unstops the deaf ears. And I'm still the God that heals leprosy. Don't you think I can speak to the wind and it obey me? Peace be still. And the Bible says they begin to marvel that even the winds and the seas obeyed him. What he was trying to tell them is you need to recognize who I am. I'm God and I'm never going to change. I'm always going to be God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just got to keep trusting and remembering the fact that he is still here. I almost titled this in case you forgot, but believe it or not, in my redneck self, I wanted to see if that was proper English. And what I found out, this is preaching material right here. Watch this. I got, I got preaching material out of an English lesson. In terms of proper English, it would have fit to say in case you have forgot. And it also fits the same in case you have forgotten. The difference is the tense. The first is simple past. It means that at some point in the past, you forgot. Boy, that's deep, ain't it? The second is, pre is perfect present, which means you forgot in the past and have been continuing to forgotten up until now. When you say, I had forgotten, that means you're standing in the moment of revelation. I feel like preaching now. Some of you have been walking around not even realizing who your daddy was. Some of you have been walking around because of the trial and the enemy has you convinced that God has left you. But I'm telling you that you are standing right now in the moment of revelation and you're beginning to remember, oh, yeah, I do remember when he paid my bills. I do remember when he healed my pot. I know what the devil said. The devil said he didn't do that anymore. But I remember when there was no way and he made a way. I'm telling somebody, you need to stand in the moment of revelation and say, this is my God that I serve. How many times has he made a way? And I know that he's going to do it again. I know that there's somebody in here right now that's tormented, but can I tell you uh, what Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and 3? Uh, Thou will keep them in perfect peace uh, whose mind is stayed on thee. Uh, I know the devil wants you to look around uh, at everything that's going on, uh, but don't forget uh, that he'll give you peace uh, in the middle of the storm. Uh, he'll give you joy uh, in the middle of your... In case you have forgotten, uh, he's still the God uh, that shows up uh, in the midnight hour. Oh, I know it's Wednesday night, but somebody ought to clap their hands right now because you know uh, that the same God uh, that brought you out before, uh, he's going to do it again. Uh, it ain't the first time somebody's been through this. Uh, God made a way uh, out of no way. Uh, and when you get that revelation, friend, uh, it's a whole lot easier to walk out uh, and stand and say, I know uh, that God is being silent. Uh, I know uh, I feel abandoned, uh, but he said he'd never leave me uh, and he'd never forsake me. Uh, and so I'll just stand on that uh, and I'll just believe that, uh, that my God uh, is never going to change. You can't scare my God. Uh, he was God before the problem and he's going to be God after the problem's gone. You can't shake my God because he's the chief cornerstone and he's still God. You can't you can't win against my God because he's never lost a battle. See the thing is is we are so easily changed by our situation. And because we're so easily changed, we think that God is changed. But you can go through the whole Bible. I don't have time to preach every story. But you can find that you can put God's people in the furnace, but that don't change God. You can put God's people in stocks and bonds, but that don't change God. You, you, you can take God's people and literally massacre them and bring them down and think you have every thread of God stomped out. And guess what? It ain't going to change God. He's just going to keep on being who he is uh, and doing what he does uh, and showing himself strong. 
I got news for somebody tonight. Your problem, it didn't change him. And it's never going to change him. You say, what, what about COVID? I don't care about COVID. It ain't changed God. So well, what, what, what if people die with it? I understand that. But guess what? He's still a healer. So, well, preacher, that's, that's, that's a little bit insensitive. Let me tell you something. God will always be God uh, in spite of what happens. It's not going to change him. I am the Lord, uh, and I change not. Uh, therefore, ye sons of Jacob uh, are not consumed. So here's, here's the, the, the dilemma. We, we are so quick to change but when you get this revelation that God is still God, and I know it's simple, but it's so easy to let go of. Well, help me, Jesus. It's easy to let go of this revelation when you get thrown in jail, Paul and Silas. But somewhere about midnight, they understood that the prison cell doesn't change God. Paul, what are we going to do? All I know is Silas is he's still God. And so in spite of what we're in right now, I think we need to sing praises and pray unto his name. You know, he said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God, Christ Jesus, concerning that. I just gave you a word right there. You've been looking for the will of God for your life. There it is. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God, Christ Jesus, concerning that. Pray evermore. Pray, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in everything for this is the will of God. I'm going to say it again. Give thanks in everything for this is the will of God. Christ Jesus concerning thee. Well, my life's falling apart. Hey, have you forgotten uh, who you're serving? Uh, and if you're not serving him, let me introduce you to him. He can show up in the middle of your storm and make a way out of no way and put your broken life uh, back together again. I don't have time. I'm telling you tonight, but if I handed this mic around to everybody in this room, I know that you see the suit and the tie and the nice done hair, but let me just tell you that behind every suit and tie and behind every nice dressed lady is a testimony that said at one point in time, I was down and out, but God brought me out time and time and time and time and time and time. He just keeps making it. That's who he is. That's what he does. Musicians, please come. I, 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 I need a little bit more than that, preacher. Stand with me, if you will. Let me just tell you something. I can't put it into words how good God is. I can't explain to you how God, I, I don't know, Brother Sutton, I don't know how God does it. He's all powerful. But you can look around. I, I'm trying to help somebody right now. I don't, I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is moving. You can look around at these people that are here that are put together. And they drove up in a nice vehicle. And they got these nice clothes on. It wasn't very long that they're sitting right where you're sitting. Broken. Falling apart. Life just in shambles. Can, can I preach this? But they met a man named Jesus. Well, I can't get no help on Wednesday night. I said they met a man named Jesus. They met a man named Jesus that said, I'll, I'll take everything that the devil meant for evil and I'll turn it around and I'll work it out for your good. And the devil said, they're through. There's no way they're going to have victory. There's no way they're ever going to get up. But the devil forgot that he was still God. Can I tell you, I don't care what the doctor said, what the lawyer said, or what the banker said. I want to know what Jesus said. Because Jesus said, all I need is a little room to work. 
need you to do is lift up your hands and surrender. All I need you to do is say, I've tried it my own way, and my own way didn't work. All I need you to do is lift up your hands and lift up your voice and say, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. And when you begin to cry out to Jesus, all of the sudden, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God that he starts showing up. Don't let that man run by himself. Somebody run with him. So I just came to church tonight because I was invited. No, you came to get an introduction to a God that you'll never forget. You came tonight to get an introduction to when you're down to your last time and it feels like all hope is lost, that you can call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. young man say well I, can, can I just walk through this I'm, I promise I'm closing this is my second closing I got one more no, okay. but I was a young man brother pastor Donald Jones pastored in Lexington Tennessee this is where I started preaching I was nine years old and I remember hearing him tell a story Bishop Sutton about a man that came to God that didn't know anything about God he was addicted to drugs and alcohol <laughs> It was a big deal. We don't really see it like that no more. But I, I got a feeling we're going to start seeing it like that again. The man came into church, and he walked to the front of the church, and he laid a crack pipe down. And he said, Preacher, I want deliverance from this. And, and some of us are a little scared when people start doing that. But have you forgotten who you serve? He said, I laid hands on the man and we began to pray for him. And he just stood there and looked at me. He said, and so I stopped him. I said, do you know how to pray? He said, I've never prayed before. He said, well, i tell you what you do. You figure out the highest praise you can give God and you just start shouting it to him. Now, this is just a little old country bumpkin church. And that man lifted up his hands and Bishop Sutton, he started shouting, hot dog, Jesus. And everybody around him started kind of chuckling, kind of like we do, because it's kind of funny. But he said it about three times, and he went to speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Because somewhere, while hot dog Jesus was coming out of his mouth, over on the other side of glory, it was being translated into hallelujah. I'm telling you, you ain't too low. It ain't too deep. It's not too dark for God to deliver you. And you're looking at some people that know who he is and know what he can do. And I'm here to tell you tonight, it's your chance. It was a cold winter night in Birmingham. And I went down to a crazy apostolic church where people were jumping and people were running. But I met a man named Jesus. Everybody that's here, if you would, step out of the aisle. If you're comfortable with it, if you're not, you can stay where you're at. But you ought to lift your hands right now and just start shouting, Jesus. I know the devil told you that he wasn't going to show up, but just start shouting, Jesus. And when you shout, Jesus, you shout, deliverer. You shout, waymaker. You shout, provider. You shout, healer. in the Holy Ghost. Devil don't want it. We used to sing a song when I was a kid. Y'all ain't got to sing it, but we used to sing a song when I was a kid. Devil don't want no shouting going on here. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all are too young to remember that. Some of y'all. But I don't care what the devil don't like. We're going to shout and sing praises unto God. Devil, why do y'all do that? 
because I know who he is. And, and I know what I feel right now. There's some of you that are here on Wednesday night. And, and, and again, this just has going to be. A, and with, I never learned how to preach on Wednesday night. I just learned how to preach on Sunday night. So I just pretend like every church service is Sunday night. That's all I know how to do. But there's some of you that are just here. And it's Wednesday night. And you came from work. And I get it. Uh, you've had a long day. You're stressed out. And, and it's just, well, can we get through this, preacher? But have you forgotten who he is? Have, have you forgotten what he's done for you? I, 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 I know you dressed up and it's Wednesday night, but you, you ought to just look back down the road of everything that's happened. Stop remembering everything that God's done for you. How we gonna have revival in the middle of 